Tesla just released a beta version of autopilot that allows the car to handle nearly every driving situation itself, including reacting to stoplights and stop signs. Now to a lot of people, this is probably pretty crazy and maybe a little terrifying to let the car do nearly all the driving itself. So today, myself and Gally from Hyperchange are gonna be the guinea pigs for you guys and put this new version of autopilot to the test on the streets of LA to see how it handles it. Really the dream with self-driving cars would be for them to get to the point where you can just hang out in the back seat, watch YouTube videos, and let the car drive you and not even worry about it. At least personally, that is my dream with the car. I really do think we are so close to getting to the point where we can just chill in the back seat, but it is going to require a lot more people to have this beta version tested out, and unfortunately we aren't there yet, but we are getting closer than ever and it's pretty exciting. First, before we get into the video, I wanted to let you guys know Omaze is giving away another Tesla. So if you want the chance to win a Tesla with full self-driving, like you're about to see, when they roll that out to everyone. Not everyone has access to this beta version of it yet. Anyway, if you want a chance to win that, Omaze is giving away a custom Tesla Model S and $20,000. So like I said, this is a Tesla Model S that has the full self-driving. So once they release the beta version to more people, you can get this, but it already has autopilot, smart summon, it can park in parallel parking spots, all the cool stuff that you'd want. It has a range of 358 miles, which I believe is the most of any Tesla at the moment. that That's like almost double the miles that I have. And it's got a really cool custom graphite matte wrap, which you definitely don't get with your typical Tesla. So that is really cool. And you have to get that custom done. And this one just comes with that. So that's awesome. If you guys are familiar with Omaze, you know Omaze works with different charities to support these charities with their giveaways. So this giveaway is supporting Give Power, which is able to provide clean water through their solar farms to different parts of the world. So your donation not only supports an awesome charity but it also enters you in a chance to win a tesla model s and twenty thousand dollars so if you want the chance to potentially win go to omaze.com shelby all right now what you came here for tesla full self-driving versus the streets of la let's do this so first let's take a look at how different the screen is and then I'll show you guys the test driving footage. So the full self-driving beta has a very different interface on the Tesla's screen than the normal autopilot. It actually really surprised me and I wasn't expecting this at all. I feel like you're getting the programmer's view and it doesn't look anything like the normal autopilot that I'm used to. It kind of looks like an old arcade game. The normal autopilot that I have and most Tesla owners have is a lot more polished looking. You see little visualizations of the car, of stop signs, different things like that. It's started to identify more and more things over the years. Like it can tell a sedan from an SUV, for example. It can see trash cans, different things like that. It's more visual and polished and totally different than the full self-driving beta. It surprised me how basic it was. And I think it is just a reminder that it's not a finished product yet. Now let's take it on an actual test drive. We took it through a few tricky situations, so you're gonna wanna see how it handles this. All right, so we are on the streets of LA, and um, yeah, this is West Hollywood, so not like the toughest driving ever, but you get some aggressive drivers here, and we'll see how it handles it. Like that right there, though. And like, that was right in front that of the yellow, kinda, and it yeah. handled it. So let's replay and slow that one down a little bit. I mean, I think that the Tesla autopilot handled this situation similarly to how I would. It slowed down a bit for the car, but still committed and went through the yellow light. Like that right there, though. And like, that was right in front that of the yellow, kinda, and it yeah. handled it. And I think this is the biggest change. It's like, so I'm watching it and not doing anything, like feet or hands, except controlling the speed, mm -hmm. um, like with this thing. And so then that's my max speed. So I feel like that you do a lot more on FSD than you do on like normal autopilot. Like you're constantly fiddling with the speed. Okay, so in this scenario, it was a really tight road where we had to kind of move over for this other car. And the Tesla did seem to figure out what to do, but it was just so slow to do it. It was kind of awkward. We were face to face with these people I could see. So Galley just kind of took over there, but it did seem like it was gonna figure out what to do. It just would take longer than most people people would. So this second time, since there was nobody in this UPS truck, we let the car just handle it to see what would happen. The last software update, I was like, oh, do I have it? I would come pretty close. This is, yeah, this is, I mean, <laughs> this is like, like a triple black diamond right after the start. I feel yeah. like, honestly, that, it did that all by itself. Yeah. That was perfect. 
So I was impressed it was able to do this. It just does it a little bit slowly, which gonna be honest, I'm glad it does because it is weird to get used to a car doing this much on its own. So now we're getting to a bit of a busier street and it's gonna have to turn into traffic. And you'll notice that it, it it's kind of hard to see here, but it tells you that it's planning on stopping and it can see the stop sign from far away. So you know what it's gonna do next and you can look out for if it doesn't know that there's a stop sign there because it won't tell you that it's planning to stop. But in every situation, it actually, it did stop for all the stop signs. So that wasn't an issue. And I, I thought it handled turning onto a busy street well. It was kind of hesitant, paused, moved up a little bit to get, you know, better view, I guess, and then turned onto the street. And honestly, it was crazy to see the wheel turning like that, with just no hands on it. it. It's pretty wild. So the way it is right now, when you're driving, you can't be recording or distracted at all because there is a little camera in here that can see what you're doing. I mean, who really knows if they're watching all the time or anything but basically if you have this version of it you can't be on your phone or they'll take it away yeah and they have actually kicked people off for like checking their phone or filming while they're on fsd so that's one thing to be careful of because you have to you're still definitely supposed to be paying attention so i'll just show you guys some more scenarios we went through and how it handled it because it's pretty cool so here's one scenario the basic autopilot could not do the light was red and the car accurately could tell that it was green waited for the rest of the cars to clear the intersection and then went through and it did it fairly quickly about the pace that a normal human would of course it slows down for stoplights that are at a stop and this is something that it could actually do with the normal autopilot if there were other cars in front of you so it's always kind of been able to do that and I'd, I'd really trust it for that so here's a scenario that the basic autopilot can't do that this one can do. So it's able to get into the left lane when it knows it has to turn left and it stops at the stoplight as we can see. It's waiting to turn left here and it's kind of cool to look at the screen and see everything that it sees. So each car is like a little moving box and you'll notice sometimes they blink which is a little weird actually like they disappear but they come back really quickly so we can see when the light turns green hands free it is able to complete this turn so that's pretty cool you do have to kind of put your hand on the wheel to let it know you're there but it, it can do the whole turn without your hands so then i stepped into the driver's seat to see what it was like to co-pilot on surface streets all right so I'm, I, okay, I thought I was gonna be like a little nervous to try this, but after seeing you try it, I'm like, it's not, it was chill. So yeah, let's do it. Let's just have the car drive for me. Okay, here we go. Feels chill so far. No cars around. And it, okay, it says stopping for traffic control in 500 feet. So I like that. Like that makes me feel like I know what's going on. I know it knows what's going on. It saw that stop sign way ahead of time. Yeah. Pretty cool. And it's gonna turn left. That's cool, cause I don't even really know where we're going. Wow. I've never, I mean, <laughs> I've never had mine do that. So that's, this is so crazy. Stopping for another traffic control, 200 feet. Isn't it trippy to have it like the wheel turn? Yeah. No, so at this four-way stop, you can see it stopped and it waited for other cars to go, but it wasn't totally sure when it was my turn. So it definitely was my turn to go and the car didn't go. So other cars started to go. Then the Tesla started to go and everyone got confused. So I just took over. Okay, so it's- Oh, this is a good one. It's Try. stopping for a while. It was like, Whoa. is it my turn? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that so they definitely think I just suck at driving. <laughs> okay, so we could have let it see what happens, but that's why we're paying attention and they're not letting, you know, people just go wild with this, I guess. So next I had a little challenge for the car. I actually know of this really odd six-way stop in Beverly Hills. And honestly, even normal human drivers get confused here. So I had to see how the Tesla would react to this one. I figured it probably wouldn't be able to handle it because it is pretty complicated. This is, wow, this is a six-way stop <laughs> sign. So we're just gonna see. <laughs> There's no way. I bet it's just not even gonna go. But it's showing like on the screen. It knows what to do. All of the cars. So it's aware of everything going on. It probably just isn't sure. 
So with this situation, it really just wasn't gonna go for a while. So I did nudge it to give it the go ahead when I could tell it was my turn. And you can see the wheel goes kind of right to left a lot and I got nervous, so I took over. But looking back at this footage, it actually had the right idea. Like it had a path it was gonna take to complete this turn. And I actually do think it would have done it. I just got nervous because it was my first time in this situation. So it did have a couple moments where the car kind of turned here and I, I don't really know why. You know, it did some things where I definitely would never use this and go on my phone at this point. And I certainly would not go in the back seat and Tesla wouldn't let you, like it just, it wouldn't even work. But it did impress me with how it handled most of these situations. So at this point, it probably is less stressful to just drive yourself than let it drive for you. So how often have you found that you use it or do you still kind of prefer to drive yourself sometimes? Yeah, to be honest, when I was getting used to it, like I only did it to show my friends. Mm -hmm. And then if it's like, all right, I gotta go somewhere, like I actually wanna go there and do it. But yeah. now it's been more and more where it kind of does itself and I get to know where it's good. And so that's where as a consumer, I think it's already adding a lot of value of like, I know it'll do really well on this road. I can kind of de-stress and let it do its thing for this part of the drive. True. So that's already adding a bunch of value, even if it's not totally Totally self driving. So, say you have a commute that you do every day, you would be able to identify the roads that full self driving does better on and areas where it's still learning. And it's really cool that people are out there testing it out because it's able to capture more information and continue getting better each day. So, what did you think? Was it better or worse than your expectations? It was better in terms of like, I felt more comfortable with it than I thought I would. But I guess just the visual screen of it was worse because it's like a beta version. Like I thought it would be more of like what you see with the autopilot I have. Like they have really nice looking stop signs. Like the graphics are just a little nicer. I'm sure they'll add that on later. So I'm not too worried. Yeah. And it kind of feels like a teenager driving that you just have to watch. And it's like pretty That's good most so times, true. but then it kind of makes like a couple boneheaded moves with decreasing frequency, I would yeah. say. So I feel like, I don't know, it's just going to keep and the way they have it set up, these new updates, it's just going to keep getting better. And like, at least for me, I feel like I can see the path to where it gets like yeah. really good. It's like it has its permit, you know, <laughs> like before you get your license. That's kind of where the, where it's at right now. But I'm impressed, it's so cool to see. After trying out this beta version of the full self-driving, I do feel like Tesla is closer than ever and closer than any other company to actually achieving this goal. But it's definitely not there yet. And they're not even really claiming for it to be there. You do have to be paying full attention. The funniest thing really was the four-way stops because it would just be so abnormally slow to react that other cars just thought you were maybe not paying attention or being a bad driver but it's just being extra hesitant because I think if it was off the bat really aggressive people would be really afraid of it. I could definitely see it working amazingly well in suburbs where there are not as complicated of driving situations and very clearly marked roads. In cities it is a little more complicated and people just drive more aggressively in LA than in your typical suburb anyway so that alone makes it like 10 times more complicated. Complicated. So I for one am so excited with where things are heading and Tesla as a company because they really are way farther ahead in the autonomous driving than it seems like pretty much every other car company. So that's cool. Be right back. Gonna go buy more Tesla stock. So that is gonna be it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Definitely check out Galley's channel. I'll have it linked down below if you're into Tesla stuff because he does a lot of videos about the company in general. So if you're into following Tesla as a company, the stock, all of that, you need to check out his channel. He does a lot of research. It's They're really good. If you want a chance to win a Tesla, I will have the Omaze giveaway linked down below. And that's going to be it for this video. Hope that you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!